Welcome to Redstone Masterclass. Let's go over trapdoors and let me see if I can show you something you didn't know. So right here we've got basic redstone. So something you should know about trapdoors is they are powered regardless of which side of the block they are attached to. And so their location is the only thing that matters, not the direction they're facing. So these are being powered even though they are hinged on the far side. So this block that the lever is powering is powering them, and the lever itself is powering them. Now over here, I've got the 16 different orientations. They can be in any of the four directions on a hinge. You can have them here and here, and they can be open or closed, and they can be on the top half of the block or the bottom half of the block. Now something you should know is that redstone doesn't power them, the dust doesn't power them, unless it points straight into them. So these two are not being powered, whereas one right here where it is pointing is. But these are the 16 different orientations. Now mobs get really confused by them. I have some of the basic passive mobs here, and they don't know that they can actually do anything with them. They're not trying to escape. They don't know that they can jump over them like we can. And so they actually serve as a substitute for fences. They actually make a good fence substitute. So this is one of the first major uses, which is right here we have a zombie, and he doesn't know that he can't get out. And so he's just going in a loop like that. He keeps thinking that he can walk over them because they are top blocks. He thinks they're all closed like this. His AI has no idea that he's going to go up there, and he's just going to fall, and he's going to fall, and he's going to fall. He doesn't know that. So this is really useful for doing mob farms. Something you should know. So another thing is, in Java at least, we're able to make crawl spaces that are one block high and mine in one block rows using that. And you can also do it with this. So I can be underneath that two pixel, three pixels right there. So I go down and see now I'm actually underneath this one. See, it's not that one. I'm actually underneath this three pixels right here. It probably looks kind of silly, but it's something you can do. This is useful for secrets. So right here, I have an observer. So if I do this quickly, I can actually make a secret room that I can get into and hide my valuables that nobody knows about. So something really cool is that they can be waterlogged and so they can be used underwater, but they also block that side of the water. And so whereas this water would flow to somewhere like here, it won't flow out unless it's down. And so it actually knows, the water kind of quote unquote knows which way it's going to drip. And so we could have the water drop down from under here. And if I had it here, it would stop if we covered up the bottom of the water. See? And so now it actually serves as a blocker on the bottom. So when it's waterlogged, it'll block the water from going out the side that it covers. Another thing is that you can use it for stairs for a one by one. See, this is a really compact way of using this. Now, normally you wouldn't make a full staircase out of this, but it's useful in a pinch when you're tight for a minimalistic stair to have something where you can just say like that, and I can come up. Let's see, I have a wall here, and I can go like this. So I can make a really compact staircase that goes up like this. Speaking of staircases, they actually work as ladders if they're above a ladder. So right here on these ladders that I can't actually go up because I would need two ladders, as long as there's a ladder beneath it, it functions as a ladder. So I can actually go up on these. This is one of the uses I use it for frequently, which is for triggering observers. Much like this one, these will cause it to trigger. And if you actually set it up like this, you can cause it to make your flying machines reverse direction. It's a really cheap, effective way to do it. Now, there are other ways that don't require this, but this is a really easy one. Something you should know is that the, if they are on the top, lined up with the top block or the bottom block, like so, they actually pretend to be like they're a full block. And so if I were to move this, it's going to break. If I were to move this, it's going to break. If I were to power a redstone, which I can actually place dust on top of them, it's going to break because they're not actually full blocks. They just pretend to be. But it's really useful for doing stuff like that. So I could I could want a lantern hanging in midair, so I could have one. See, I'm on the wrong side of the block. I need one right here, see? They are three pixels high, so that's one and a half snow blocks. 
and I made a little lava lamp here. And so that's pretty much all I've got for this. So now your homework is going to be a little bit more challenging. I want you to take iron trapdoors, and I want you to make a two by two door that opens and closes out of trapdoors. And so do this. Go and make these and these. I'm standing in the box right here. You get the idea. You want to make a two by two door out of them. There we go. And see, see if you can do that with iron trap doors and make it open and close. And that's it. Class dismissed.